Cool. Okay. So, um, happy new year, everyone. So this is the first kind of, uh, um, event we've done, uh, this, this year, I think we, so we did our, our GA4 event in November. Uh, this time we thought we'd do something a little bit different, uh, a look at, um, Adobe versus Google Analytics 4 or, or the, the paid version of Google Analytics 4. Uh, so for that, uh, we've got two other kind of, uh, like Adobe sort of specialists and experts kind of on the call. So, uh, we've got Phil Law uh, on the kind of like business side uh, and uh, Alice uh, on the implementation side, uh, both with a huge amount of experience on, on Adobe. Uh, and then me on the Google Analytics sort of four and, and GA4 uh, 360. Uh, the, the reason behind this, why we sort of picked this talk, um, obviously Google Analytics 4, there's this sort of deadline in, you know, just short of six months time uh, and, and everyone's kind of forced to sort of change from, from GA3. Uh, so it's it's a, a point where people would consider like what are the best tools and solutions for them uh, and what else is kind of in the market and what's the pros and, and cons of of, uh, of different solutions kind of out there and what's the, the kind of best way of, of selecting those and maybe some kind of experience from from uh, uh, other sort of experts kind of on the call. Uh, just just a quick kind of housekeeping thing. Uh, so there will be a recording of this event. So you don't need to ask for will there be a recording uh, uh, and the slides will also be available. We'll, we'll sort of send them out after the event. If you want to get access to them sooner, um, you can sort of fill in that form, which is not particularly uh, uh, friendly. So you might need to screen print it to remember what it actually is. Uh, just uh, regarding um, uh, the, the sort of people on this call, uh, uh, Phil, I don't know if you want to sort of uh, uh, introduce your, yourself and just uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll just do a quick hello. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm Phil. Um, got a bit of a back, background in PhD in modelling. I've been working kind of well, for digital, digital analytics seems like forever now, but about 10, 10 or twelve years. Um, and I'm currently working at a company called Sedex. I, I do a lot of product analytics. Uh, so hi, I'm Alice Moore, um, Alice Jennifer Moore, if you're looking for me on LinkedIn. I've been working in analytics for over 13 years now, which feels slightly ominous and I'm looking forward to it ticking over, but specifically with implementations and a lot of product analytics and analytics strategy and setup. Uh, I'm currently a principal analytics consultant at Foolproof and I look after the analytics team here. So, um, but I have previously been client side in quite a few companies for quite a long time. So that's a bit about me. Yep. And, uh, People have probably heard, heard about me from other webinars, so I won't go into de too much detail. The only thing I would say, uh, in the past, I used to work at creditcards.com a long, long time ago, and they were actually an Adobe user uh, and also uh, using uh, Urchin at the time. Uh, so, yeah, it probably gives you an idea of how long I've been around for. Um, uh, I do have an identical twin um, called Steve. Um, he's a tennis coach, doesn't know anything about uh, analytics, um, but he is pretty good on, on bounce rate. Um, oh. Sorry. Um, the uh, I don't know, uh, for, for simplicity, because obviously we've got two, call, two fills uh, on this call, so I don't know if we say like Google fill and Adobe fill just, just to keep things simple. Uh, Phil, I don't know if you want to mention a bit about uh, your company or... Yes, yeah, so so I'll give a little bit of background. So I'm a company called Sedex. Um, you know, we know a lot about ECG regulation in the marketplace at the minute. What we It's effectively a product that um, looks at your supply chain. So it's all about putting in who your suppliers are, who your buyers are, and it kind of like an auditing software. So what I'm kind of focused on is what I'm currently doing now is much more product analytics. So how are people using the tool? Um, yeah, I, and I am actually using GA, GA4 for this at the minute, kind of feeds into that Adobe background. Yeah, sort of and uh, what was the, the company you were at before um, Adobe Film? Yeah, so I was at, so a bit, I've been at, I was a Vodafone before for a long time. Then before that, I was an agency working on Mercedes Benz. I, before that, I did actually used to do a good stint at Adobe. So I'm definitely like, you know, much more than the Adobe camp, after, especially after using both tools. But I can see the benefits in both of them. And uh, Alice, over to you. Uh, if you want to just uh, explain a bit about uh, Foolproof. Yeah, so I currently work for a company called Foolproof. We have a rich history of doing customer research and focusing on kind of user-centric um, design as well. So uh, it covers everything from research, sort of standard research techniques, all the way through, obviously, to data analytics and modeling. Um, but then we also do design, we do strategy with that and product and engineering. And these days, while I used to be very much only Adobe and very pro Adobe, as some people may know, I do also work with GA and GA4 and other things. I have done GA4 implementations as well. And we have a variety of clients in different uh, verticals, which some of which can be really fascinating. Recently on an agronomy client, if you don't know what agronomy is, it's the science of farming and that's lots of fun. So that's a bit about foolproof and where I am. 
And uh, I don't know if you're allowed to mention names, Alice, but have you worked on any big kind of Adobe implementations in the past? Yeah, the, when I was at Disney. So when I was client side, I tended to do more. So um, I implemented Adobe at Disney. I implemented, I worked on the implementation when I was at Discovery for its contract for a while. They're the kind of main ones I was quite involved with uh, many years ago. An Adobe implementation at The Guardian was using Adobe when it was still Omniture, as in I started using it before Adobe finished buying it, which was a long time ago, if you find out so uh yeah there's some of the ones i've worked on and i've done implementations using ga as well working on fernando's back in lockdown times and things as well cool all right so a, a good amount of experience so um if people have got kind of questions for for the uh, the, the panel then uh, um they can they can ask them i'm just going to whiz over ourselves so we're more on the google side doing loads of ga3 ga4 migrations and uh, large-scale implementations uh we were also building out our kind of uh, um, auto migration features so we've got um uh, ga4migrator.com which bulk uh, migrates an account if you want to try it out it's totally free uh, and we're also building out some other kind of ga4 sort of solutions to help with with bulk migrations um uh, and there's a bunch of cheat sheets which I'll probably put towards the end with like migration sort of plans and other like templates. Uh, I've got a bunch of uh, compliance templates as well, which uh, are in, in GTM that I can also sort of share. So, as, so in terms of what we'll we'll roughly kind of go through today, uh, we were going to look at sort of uh, uh, implementation, data models, data capture, and and sort of integrations. Uh, and just some of the sort of key differences uh, sort of between uh, uh, the, the sort of tools. Um, Alice, I'm probably just going to hand the, the the presenter controllers over to you uh, on as, as we start getting into the questions kind of bit. Um, I'll just press stop sharing if you want to just take control of the screen. Let me just make sure I've got the right bit up and I'm on the right page. We've got an agenda for today around um, kind of running through the differences. Rough running order will be around kind of deciding on products, about uh, the differences in products going through what the uh, different kind of implementations would involve, what the different processes are to get these things up and running and integrated, and then how you get data out of them. And that's sort of the storyline that we're going to go through as we uh, answer these questions. Uh, any questions you have along the way, there is a Q&A section in the chat if you want to add anything, um, and we'll check back at it towards the end. To start with, the first question we're addressing is who is it for? Um, and the two areas of this are main use cases and then which is better suited for your business. Alice, should we just check uh, people can access chat? Can you just put the word yes uh, uh, into chat just so we know it's it's kind of there? I think there might be an actual Q&A. Yeah, there's an actual Q&A thing as well. So people are putting that in there. Just for the uh, Q&A section, if if you do have questions, don't put them in the chat. Just put them in the Q&A and it's a good place to save them for the end. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Do you want to talk about this slide or shall I? So the sort of first question is around kind of the use cases for the different tools. If Shall I go first on this one? Um, yeah. Yeah. So so um, we kind of put this on there just just uh, as a, a, a rough kind of guide. So um, Google Analytics 3 and Google Analytics 4, they're kind of more for like the masses. Uh, so very high adoption rates because obviously there's like a free version. So on here it's like, you know, up to you know, almost 90% in some some areas. Um, that adoption rate does go down as it gets more into like the big beasts. So like the sort of Ebays and the Amazons and the Microsofts. Um, and that's where Adobe kind of, uh, that's its kind of more of it, uh, uh, its, its sort of market. So you can see as, as you get on the top 1000 sites, uh, there it's got, you know, 8.5% or, or, or thereabouts so um google have kind of you know they, they go for the the mass market um uh with a way of, sort of splitting out uh, like the premium bit of that mass market chunk um just one note um we did look at kind of built with which does a crawler of all websites and on ga3 you're able to kind of work out if it's a, like a premium account because you can look to see if there's like 21 dimensions which means it must be a premium um for ga4 um, there's not like an inline flag that you can see uh, that that marks it as premium. So it's a little bit more difficult to kind of find those GA4 like premium account. Um, the the list above is is GA4 like free version uh, just because we can't easily pull out the GA4 like sort of premium list. So we couldn't make it exactly kind of fair fair comparison here. But we, we, uh, uh, um, you, you get the idea in terms of the distributions of of the different types of site. I don't know, Phil, if you want to kind of add anything on that. Um, not 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 to not yet no. Yeah, I think the I mean, kind for me, of... you know, it's, it's, yeah, like it's just repeat what you said, really. That you know, Google's like mass market tool. It's got like your, it's got your entry level for your like beginners, and it kind of moves up to premium, and then really the kind of 
GA360 is more comparable to uh, to Adobe. Yeah. yeah, and there's definitely, although 80% is still quite high for Google Analytics in the kind of top thousand, it is distinctly lower than the ratings for kind of the other groupings. So there's definitely that kind of slide towards other tools. Um, and there'll be other things in the mix as well. Cool. Someone's asked a question, but in, in chat. So um, Motorola person, if you could uh, add that in the the the, uh, the Q&A rather than the chat, um, it's just going to be easier for us to kind of answer it if possible. So the next couple of slides, just look at the types of um, kind of companies that are using them. So to run through this, the kind of top ones using Adobe Analytics, you've got your kind of Amazon's have it, Tesco have it, quite some quite, you know, big names. So sites that have quite big sites. But also worth noting, some of these are quite complex. So Tesco doesn't just sell bread. It also sells banking um, facilities and other things. So they're the sort of Adobe Analytics ones. And then GA, you get a lot and you also get a lot of the smaller sites as well. Do either of you guys want to say anything on these? Yeah, I think one of the quite surprising things for Adobe is um, Amazon use Amazon do use Adobe, um, which you, you, th you think they would have their, the way they are and the way they're built. They would have their own solution. So it shows that even if you're... If you're big, Adobe clearly has something that they that they see valuable. I would I would add on this one as well. Um, it's it's interesting. So so when I was at creditcards.com, uh, Google that was actually the first market that Google entered in terms of their own comparison site. Uh, um, so obviously, if, if Google's actually then becomes a direct competitor, um, obviously you don't really want to use Google Analytics in that situation because they can see how the site is performing. Um, um, I think thankfully um, the European kind of regulators have, have jumped in and said actually Google you can't kind of eat other people's lunch and and they've sort of stopped it kind of uh, 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 adding its own product into SERPs um, or at least made it so you know other comparison sites can can get shown so and I think they kind of edged back on that and Mark, Mark moved more into uh, um, you know back into search and display um, I think the other thing that's also kind of interesting from from this list uh, I think the, the fact that Salesforce is using Adobe, given that Salesforce has a direct uh, integration with with GA3, um, I thought is is interesting. On the next slide, though, a HubSpot is more on the Google side, so they're using Google Analytics. And I thought the other thing is interesting is uh, uh, Elon Musk with with Twitter, who's kind of cost cutting central, is uh, is also using kind of Google. Yeah, I mean, from from my experience, I've seen sites start with Google and then like ramp upwards and then start adding like paid tools. So it's kind of like a sort of grow and then expand and, and add. Um, I, I don't know if uh, like Adobe Phil or, or Alice, if if you've seen it more on these established kind of sites where they're they're um, you know um, they're not in necessarily a massive growth mode, but they've already got a good base and a good following and uh, are more uh, uh, been around longer. Similar, I think it also touches on some of the stuff we're going to touch on later in the panel, though uh, later in the session around barriers to entry within some of these tools. So some of the stuff around implementations and things, there are costs associated with Adobe Day One, whereas obviously you no cost with Google, which it particularly with the free version, obviously. So there's kind of that barrier to entry, which makes a difference if you're brand new. Yeah. And also I think oh, the other thing about like Adobe, who has Adobe is a big legacy component there. I think if you look at the Adobe, there's a lot of banks, which, you know, traditionally what, five, six, seven years ago when the market was completely different, you're going to go with Google, you potentially have some shared risk or go with Adobe. And so they would just stay with who they've had for a while because, you know, legacy reasons so when it comes to the kind of sorry skip to uh when it comes to kind of the direct comparison of some of these things um as you can see some of the kind of key there are a few key differences the cost being number one uh how it's set up what the reporting's like um and what dimensions and metrics are but um some of these we're going to touch on in a minute in the kind of implementation side and the interface side. But is there anything you wanted to say around the kind of costs or anything around this uh, Adobe fill to start with? Well, I think I mean, the main issue is like the Google costs are quite well defined. Um, Adobe costs, it's a bit of a how long is a piece of string. I mean, we've put $150,000 here. That I'm pretty sure you could get it for a loss a lot less than that. But it's a very customizable solution. So you can add stuff on, take stuff away. So it, 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 it's not it's not it's not something that's free, but then it probably could could start a lot less than fifty dollars, but also it could go up to a lot more depending on like your server calls and your independent use cases. Anything you'd like to add? Um, I'm trying not to call you bad twin Phil, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I think that well, there's two fills on this, well, three fills now actually, because um, uh, uh, Chris is on my other login. So uh, the uh, I would say um, 
Well, with, with Google Analytics, the, the paid version of this applies on GA3 and GA4. Uh, it's always good to run it for like at least three months first, get it all set up or as much of it set up as possible, and then consider the paid version, as in put, put that, that time into uh, uh, configuration setup and, and building out the team uh, and, and also pick the right time to upgrade. Uh, and there's going to be probably a mass... Uh, lots of people that maybe upgrade to GA4 like the month before GA3 stops working because it it buys them an extra year. Uh, um, I think the other thing is it's it, there's there's a kind of a middle road. There's the shame there's not like a 75k ish solution because there's there's going to be some sites where they need some premium features but they just don't like under 50k is not. Is, is too much um, I mean what we normally try and do is is literally max out the free tool both GA3 and GA4 use as much of those that the, the features that they both support uh, um, uh, and for the stuff that uh, is is like paid only there's certain workarounds for like for instance getting round but rolled up profiles you can we you, you can you've got some creative solutions for that so we you can get kind of some of the paid features in the free version um and uh, and obviously the fact that j4 now has big query is a massive like benefit um so spending a lot of time on on uh, the big query setup and and configurations is is also like a, a, a pretty pretty cool uh yeah i think it would be nice if if um if adobe like had like a calculator sheet uh, um, but I, I was uh, uh, talking like before before the school uh, to you, Alice, regarding like costs and stuff, and like tactics for maybe getting a cheaper price on Adobe. Uh, what was your or comments on that? Well, it's not tactics, and Adobe's an interesting one because it could cost it could cost quite a bit less than um, one hundred fifty thousand if uh, depending on your server call limits. So Adobe has a different model to Google. Google has a flat fee um, up to a certain amount, and then. Whereas Adobe Analytics, it's very bespoke. It's based on how much use you're going to put through. Um, and obviously you get economies of scale. If you're really, really massive, you'll get you'll have uh, more server calls at sort of a lower rate, although you're paying more. Um, whereas if you're quite small, uh, you're going to have fewer server calls at a higher rate, but it could be, yeah, as I say, less than 150,000. Um, I mean, you know, you need to tell them how many server calls you're having, and that's going to affect the budgeting. There are things that will come on to around when it comes to setup as well, that Adobe will often try and add extra things in around um, consulting and things. So it's worth shopping around to make sure you're getting the best deal when it comes to consulting and the tool itself to get the setup done um, when you're kind of going through. Don't just sort of look at the package, make sure you're actually taking apart what is in the package that Adobe is proposing, because um, I have seen mistakes made around, oh, yeah, you could have this thing for free for the first month. But the problem is it's going to take you a month to get it set up. So it's not really free because you're not going to be using it. So there are things there where you actually want to see. There'll be like a list of everything you're getting and what the charges are. Just be aware of what's within that list. Um, and it can go a lot higher than 150,000. It a lot higher. A couple, couple more zeros higher. Well, mm. at least one zero higher. Uh, and I've seen obviously uh, on, so I, I did um, some... Uh, a couple of very large sites where they were on like um, sort of tier two hundred million hits or above, and obviously it jumps a, 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 a on a on a payment threshold on 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 uh, what used to be you know GA three or GA premium. Um, yeah, as I guess it um, for for the audience though, uh, cost may not necessarily be the most important factor, but uh, um, you know obviously features and 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 what it does and how it does it and and the match to the business is probably more important um but yeah if, if there's a massive difference between between the two then it, it it obviously could 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 um, be a thing and what i normally recommend is at least having uh, both active so that uh, um uh, then if you're uh, on adobe and you've got like a yearly or two yearly renewal point you can say look if we don't get a good price we we're going to switch to to google uh, and you know using it as a uh, um uh, negotiating tactic i don't know if it's worth maybe doing a quick survey will um just to ask kind of uh, people uh, on on the call uh, um sort of what tool are they currently using and and also a chance for us to try out zoom surveys um uh, yeah so maybe try in the it's called a, a poll i believe so we'll just try see if that will invoke so what, while we're all setting that up and getting that through we're going to carry on just because we're already halfway through our time we're not halfway through the session what about slide so five or six? let's let's get moving along um one thing when we're talking in this whole session there is one question that's come up that having several push it to the end ga4 has 
two different options. There is free GA4, which you can implement, set up, and then pay to go up with, like you could with the old fashioned uh, GA3. Old fashioned, <laughs> I remember when it was released. Um, the old fashioned GA3, where you could just implement it and then you could upgrade to paid. GA4, it does have the same setup, I believe, right, Phil? Uh, Google, Phil? Um, I was reading someone's question at the same same time as that. Can you just repeat that last bit, um, Alice? Oh, oh, GA3, you used to, you could implement the free version and then upgrade to GA4, uh, yep. sorry, GA3 paid. Yep. GA4 has the same mechanism where you yes. can implement GA4, upgrade to a paid version. Yes, you can upgrade yes. or downgrade, yeah. Okay, perfect. So I think it, just because so people are aware, we're predominantly comparing the paid version in this session. Um, the free version is mentioned uh, but yes, we're talking about the paid version, just as uh, it's more comparable compared to Adobe compared to the free version. Yeah, cool. Someone right. did did ask a question. Um, I don't know whether we do questions kind of as we're going through them, or do you want to? The only reason I addressed that one was because it might influence how people see sure. the whole session. So that's why I brought that one in. Sure. So these are some of the decisions that you need to make when you're like assessing which of these sorts of tools you're going to have. There's different types of website, and these would sort of lean towards different tools. Um, is there a, so sort of what we're saying here is you've got smaller websites and you've got larger websites which would you advise for which adobe film so what was that um so what was that question so i got i got distracted by the poll dangerous dangerous things uh so here we've got an example of two different types of websites so which of these would you advise would you use adobe analytics and why yeah so obviously there's a lot of crossover between google analytics and adobe analytics and for me, where Adobe, Adobe Analytics kind of has a bit a bit of an edge over Google is that the amount of kind of like the custom variables you've got and this EVAR concept that is sticking to you in events, um, where that really pays off, you've got like quite a complex website. So I think we've got we've got Tesco up there. You want one analytics platform to put every single thing in. So you'd almost have groups of variables. So you'd have like a group of variables, Tesco club card, a group of variables with recipes. I think if you find, if, if, if you use Google, you can still do it with Google, but you'd kind of run into these limitations quite quickly, um, which is why, why it kind of works for uh, GA4 would actually work average more for a smaller website, for example, what website is that there? But if you had a website that sold hats and it's just, you come on, you look at different hats and you buy hats, GA would be perfect for that. Um, so it's really, to me, it's really like complexity and that kind of like extra kind of ability Adobe gives you to kind of solve some of the more complex business questions. Anything you'd like to add, uh, Google, Phil? Uh, so um, the one thing that the, the benefit um, with, with lots of small sites or kind of almost like a long tail of, of, of Google uh, uh, users uh, is that um, there's a lot of community plugins and things that you can rapidly install. So, for instance, if it's a WordPress site, you've got a GTM for WordPress, which can be configured for, for GA4. Uh, the same also applies. There's a bunch of really cool plugins for like Drupal, Magento. Um, there's ways of getting Shopify working with GA4. Uh, and uh, it means that you could like rapidly uh, set those up with GA4. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, if it's, if it's, let's say, a thousand WordPress sites, let's say, where there are plugins for, you know, J4, uh, there may be an instance where it reaches a certain threshold where actually it, you need, like, the paid version um, because yeah. of the volume and stuff or the need to do, like, back-end roll-ups and, and stuff. But, yeah, I, I get it in terms of if it's a massive beast or, or one site that's really complex, like Tesco's where they've got, you know, payment portal, login environment, all that sort of stuff, it, 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 it does make sense from that. It sounds like scaling as well as the kind of one of the key things with Google, the Google option, particularly if you've got a small site, you know, you can scale it up when it comes to it, but you don't have to just to start with. Um, so that'd be one of the key kind of benefits, I imagine, particularly, you know, maybe you start selling hats, but then you realize that you could do a monthly subscription for hats and everybody wants it for excellent reasons. Um, and then you can scale up when you have a million people a month buying your hats. I'm going to move on just because low on time. In this next section, we're kind of go, going to go more into depth of how these are different. We've got three kind of key questions. And the first one of those we're going to talk about is what's the difference in the data model and data capture, which is effectively the question of how much work needs to go into the setup and implementation of this tool. The second one we're going to look at is the kind of ecosystem around some of these tools. Very few of the analytics tools uh, now sit as purely analytics tools whether we're talking Google Analytics or Adobe or other ones like Amplitude, they always have other things you can plug in or they have um, other features within the systems. So how does that sit within the tech stack or MarTech stack? Um, so that's kind of what's the unique value of this. What are some of the plugins and some of the things you can do? 
And then the third bit we're going to address is around accessing insights. What are the key differences with the interfaces? What can you get? What can't you get? Which is really about how easily and quickly can you get that valuable insights and get to the tracking of your success? Question one is around what's the difference in the data model and data capture? So the implementation. We have our wonderful bespoke models here. This goes back to a long time ago when somebody excellent said uh, Adobe Analytics is the most is one of the best kit cars you can buy. You can buy anything. You can build anything with Adobe. Whereas Google Analytics is not the same. Slight problem with bespoke uh, configurations. A Formula One car is great if you want to go fast. It's a terrible idea if you want to go on a romantic weekend away. Not only do you not have anywhere to put your luggage, you don't have anywhere to put your partner. Let's start with you today, Google, um, Google Phil. Uh, what would you like to say about the kind of functionality of Google out of the box? One of the key things uh, about uh, uh, Google Analytics 4 uh, is that um, they've shifted uh, to more of a kind of like a, 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 a uh, to make it even simpler to install, so they've they've now got um, uh, what are called uh, 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 enhanced events, uh, which you'd go tick 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 tick, and it's going to turn on scroll tracking, PDF tracking, mail to uh, Ajax, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and also with some of those events, you can imp combine GTM to capture any stuff that's not covered out of the box. So you can in effect use the the data layer values that are output via uh, these GA four uh, uh, new listeners and do extra stuff like for instance um, uh, html5 videos which are not part of the kind of out of the box list but you can you can plug that in the other thing uh, on on the kind of on the model of cga4 is shifted away from what used to be like five things so page view event transaction social and speed only over two things so it's now just page view and event but the, those events have been massively expanded so you can now send lots of stuff with those events, uh, but it is quite a shift. For instance, like transactions shifting over to events is 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 a bit of a kind of a like a new nuance. Uh, uh, really, though, the good good news in some ways is there are ways of of mapping GA three, uh, like enhanced e-commerce data layers, for instance, to GA four. So it makes it easier to get running with with uh, like uh, uh, e-commerce data in, in GA4, um, and that that data model of let's say an extra twenty five things attached to an event uh, is is potentially you know if you want to customize you you've got a lot more kind of freedom. Uh, so um, uh, yeah, the the only annoying thing from my side would be there's there's certain features that are still missing in uh, uh, in GA4. So uh, um, item or product scoped dimensions are apparently about to come out any minute but they're not quite there um, and also the same for uh, um, custom metrics which we don't have a user scoped custom metric things like lifetime custom value which which would be nice um, so uh, um, the uh, yeah I, from my side that it, 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 it there's more that it's going to capture out of the box but um, um, I personally I, I I've I've We've got solutions for expanding out that generic stuff to make make it so it captures everything else that it you know you, you need to capture. Uh, over to Adobe Phil. Well, I'll just, I'll just talk about uh, GA4 actually a little bit because I think oh, it's quite clear that GA4. I think there's a lot of stuff missing from GA3. There is still a gap with GA4. It, 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 you can tell that adding stuff all the time is so is is getting better. I think with the events model, you know, I'm using GA4 at the minute, and it does give you a lot more flexibility to do to do stuff and kind of have those kind of bespoke solutions. Um, so yeah, it's good. And also the yeah, the the advanced, the the inbuilt variables, that is really good when you're starting to become a pain when I replace them with implemented ones can be can be quite difficult. Um with Adobe, so Adobe still uses Adobe still uses the classic hit like page view link session visitor level visitor level um, um kind of kind of data hierarchy um which I've always found completely fine for stuff. Um I think the key the key thing with Adobe is that it has this concept of it has this concept of EVARs. So they're just like in comparison to Google, they basically stick with you. So you can set someone of that, set someone a value, say you're doing a search and it's, I don't know, search for a red dress, then it will stay with you until you do a key event, the event, and it kind of is quite good at mapping what someone does and further down the line doing an event. So that kind of capability gives you kind of a lot more flexibility in terms of like designing more bespoke question, uh, more bespoke business questions that come up, particularly, I don't know, I think 
like tracking tools, for example, tool, you've got like some sort of spec, say you're a travel agent or something, you've got some sort of search tool, you want to track exactly what parameter, parameters people are doing, you can set and follow, follow, follow them through the whole journey. Well, I would say that, you know, this, coming back to the kind of kit car analogy of the sports car, that you do need, like, you you do need kind of a whole engineering team. Like for example, on the normal, you know, for good analytics, you can get going, you can drive around, have a nice day. But if you've got Adobe Analytics, you need like a guy that specializes in the wheels. You need a guy that specializes in, in the drill sticks. You need a much bigger team to kind of um, get that value out of it. Yeah, it's, you definitely need a mechanic to build your kit car. You can't build the kit car by yourself, not unless you do a lot of study. Yeah. Um, so I would reflect that. I would also say you don't have to build yourself a Formula One car. That's kind of the point. You can build anything. And yes, if you build yourself a Formula One car type setup, you will need the whole team. You probably need a slightly smaller team if you're just building yourself like a really fantastically great, more normal type car. I would also add, so Adobe's sort of EVARS and prop system, it's great. And we've only touched on it very lightly in this conversation. It is super bespoke, even in the back end. So Phil mentioned how it can follow you around during your session. It can also do a cross session. So if you click something and then you come back three days later, as long as you're using kind of as long as the user ID stuff's in there, it will track across that as well. It will also you can have it set so it cancels at certain points if you do certain things or you can have it just exist in a very short period of time. Uh, what's known as sort of you can also allocate percentages and things across the visit as well if you do multiple things. Yeah, yeah. it's very bespoke. Um, to the first value or the last value. Like it's very, like you can get into real kind of minor, minor detail, which can make the analysis harder because you have to know how the variables are set. Um, I don't know if, I, if Alice does this, like I sometimes when I come with variables, I actually write in the actual name of the variables, some of the things like the expiring yeah. stuff to help people. Adobe does have some good functionality around uh, adding notes into some of these things as well, which does help with that. So that is an extra bit of functionality. Guys, can we run through this just very quickly around the kind of numbers side of things? If you can start Adobe. Yep. So traditionally, Adobe has got 75 props, 300 EVARs and 1,000 events. If you use that, it used to be limited to 75. If you use them, you are all of them. You are a crazy person. <laughs> like, there's no way you could possibly do all of them. <laughs> Have you used them all before, Alice? No, I just said challenge accepted. Oh, my challenge um, <laughs> But, you know, you, you know you're, you're not going to hit any limits in terms of that. A yeah. metrics, you've got a limit. Yeah. A metrics, you've got, like, a limited metrics you can create as well. Yeah. Built so, the events, yeah. Props are effectively kind of your standard dimensions, much like some of the ones in Google. Your EVARs are the ones where you can do fancy things with the allocation. And the events are just um, number of times something happened and add to cart, for example. So when we talk about events in Adobe, they're not the same thing as events in Google, which brings me on to Google, Phil. Please tell us what events and custom dimensions mean in GA4. Um, just one question that was asked from the previous uh, uh, session uh, or free, previous slide. Someone asked about tracking of iframes um, and that, that applies to both Google and Adobe. Um, and there's there's ways of doing it and you have to basically use a method called post message API from within the iframe back up to the parent page. Uh, but the person that asked that if you send me an email, I'll, I'll email you the solution that you could use and it applies to both tools. Uh, um, in terms of these events, I'm going to cheat a little bit, Alice, and just share my screen quickly, uh, which is um, sharing and uh, it should automatically jump to me, I think, hopefully. Yeah, uh, that's uh, the so on this is the GA3 version uh, um, where basically you can see the differences so uh, the dimensions have jumped from 25 up to 100 uh, and then event parameters have also jumped from 25 up to 100 uh, conversion someone asked this question they've in, increased so in, in GA3 it used to be 20 now it's 30 in the free version and, and you've got uh, 50 in the paid version um, but the, the key thing really that's that's changed, which which impacts these kind of big sites, is the bits I've highlighted in in um, uh, in, in 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 yellow. There, it's is those lim data limits. So especially if they're using BigQuery, uh, you know, and it's huge volumes of of data, and you you know if that data cuts off, that's obviously a problem. So um, uh, and, and so it's not just the the sort of you know like the 10 million ish like collection limits. Uh, it's also the limits that apply from the data push from like GA4 into uh, a big query. Uh, um, so uh, um, yeah, and and also the other slightly annoying thing um, is that um, that some of that that data on on GA 
uh, for um, it used to be it was unlimited for the the sorry on G three it was unlimited for the amount the duration of how long you kept the data for. They've obviously dropped that down to um, uh, fourteen months or, or two months on the default setting. Um, obviously, if the the paid version it jumps up to like fifty months. Of obviously, if the site's doing it year on year, um, they're only you know they can't do beyond like you know two years ago which is a, a bit a bit of a uh, bit of an annoyance and this is this is for the explorer reports which is like the custom reports um uh in in the the default reports those those those, those settings don't necessarily apply yeah it's, it's important to be aware of these limits because obviously if you hit them and it's massive volumes you know, you need to basically force to kind of upgrade. Um, uh, in in terms of comparing to Adobe, it's probably maybe we will, after this this the talk we'll add a, the the comparisons for 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 to to compare those those two versus each other. Um, the I did also put a note down here in terms of the the GA three like standard versus three sixty just just for comparative. So you've got those two options kind of uh, on there. Uh, obviously for GA the free version of of GA four and that 10 million hits bit that that's kind of gone away but the restriction has more been added at the big query point where it's the data is kind of exported yeah and in terms of just jumping if you want to take control again uh, um alice i'm just going to get us to jump on because we've got 10 more minutes and sure. i realize there may be people on the call who are very happy to go over but i also want to make sure people get maximum value from the time we have left so um this one's just very quickly on integration possibilities i think on this one we probably want to touch on them very very quickly and then people will need to know like the kind of key takeaways what would you say the kind of key takeaways around the integration options with uh adobe there's lots of options with adobe you can do them you can do you can use it for market analytics like doing campaigns and stuff like that I think, I think the key thing for Adobe is like personalization. So the integration has with Adobe Target, which is their AB personalization tool. And also the uh, Adobe Experience Manager as well, where you can get all data in and kind of make that more customizable experience based on data on your customer. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if, if people are spending a lot on, on AdWords or they've got uh, a Firebase app, uh, or you know google organic is important all of those things are kind of google to google things so google search console impressions uh, um and, and you youtube data flowing through or you know your uh, google ads cost data um the other things would be uh, if they're on on like the google stack in terms of the display or, or integrations with um, display and video 360 which is going to plug obviously into uh, google analytics uh, and also what used to be the kind of double click uh, a bit which was search ads uh, 360 so there are some integrations there which kind of give google a little bit of a, a sort of advantage um given they are a marketing company um the other thing i would say on that um there are certain features which uh, Google has introduced. So consent mode being an interesting one, where um, if if their the website's got a cookie banner, and there and the, let's say fifteen percent of users opt out, and um, there's now a native thing. It's not kind of in that list, but uh, for kind of upscaling of conversions, which both upscales for both Google Ads conversions and also the double click conversions. Or uh, so there's there's certain extra features or or you know the the up upscaling kind of pieces or what they call modeling which is is a nice kind of uh, feature that the google is kind of expanding out that's actually part of the free version of uh, ga um so you don't need like 360 to to get the uh, like consent mode modeling as i say it's kind of i use both and things there is worth mentioning obviously all of the adobe things are paid so you can't use any of these unpaid um and you have things like campaign which is a kind of excellent tool for sending things out although i heard at one point they were going to deprecate that for new users but obviously on the google side i believe data studio has been replaced by looker but these are basically a lot of these are free they're you know optimized was free and then data studio is free so there's a massive cost difference not just when you're buying your analytics tool but with everything else that you've got going on that said that's not to say don't invest in adobe if it's suitable for you, which is why we're here today to understand a bit more about what makes it suitable for some people and not others. So oh, I forgot to mention. So actually, uh, the the campaign manager and, and DV three hundred and sixty are actually paid plugins, so they're they're not part of GA three hundred and sixty. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm an optimized uh, data studio. They just renamed it Looker Studio for some crazy reason. Uh, um, but uh, the other bits, the the other bits on so search ads, you know, integration with Google Ads is. Is, is free uh, and and you know, Looker Studio and, and Optimize. The main difference on Looker Studio is the the API restrictions are um, massively in, increased on on GA three hundred and sixty. So about a month ago, Google made GA four 
kind of introduced a kind of thresholding. Um, so it means you now either use, need to use BigQuery for GA4 reporting uh, to use BigQuery as a proxy, or you have to build reports in a certain way where they don't like hit Google Analytics 4 directly too much. Uh, so th there is now kind of an increasing need of using Looker Studio, like, and it's a big site and there's lots of users using Looker Studio reports, then there's a benefit um, uh, to using mm. uh, the paid version for, for like Looker Studio now. Yeah, not to go into details, but I do believe with free Google as well, if you use more of the BigQuery that there can be cloud, cloud costs associated, which is one of the ways they're increasing the kind of revenue stream for Google Analytics is actually kind of some of these small incremental costs. So even if you're on free, if you're free, small site, you're not going to have problems with costs probably, and you won't be using enough of the cloud activities to reach a threshold for that. However, when you start getting bigger, if you're still on the free one, you could end up with costs associated with the activities you're doing around BigQuery. Cool. Going to move on because time, time is of insights. So reporting interfaces. So there are, we're going to kind of jump into what does Adobe Analytics provide from a reporting point of view and from kind of an out-of-the-box reporting point of view. Then we're going to have a quick discussion around uh, GA4 and then we're going to jump ahead. Got yeah, about be, be, very quick, be very quick on this. So uh, Adobe, Adobe has this, thing, uh, this concept called workspaces. It has, yeah, a concept called workspaces. It's got like um, visualizations, metrics, dimensions, segments. And it's very much a drag, drop, and build. So you use this kind of like for two kind of two things. There's kind of building reports of the people in the business where you, you build a report, build a dashboard, you drag, drag in your metrics and variables, you save it, you send it around. The other thing it's for is um, kind of doing kind of it's kind of replaced one old tool called Adobe Adhoc slash Discover, which is very, very good. I'm all very upset about it going. Um, but to do, you can do analysis on it. You can break, you can break down. And I would say one of the things I'm coming way to GA4 is that well, at, well, at a superficial level, it's very similar to this Google exploration, I believe it's called, where it's a similar sort of drag and drop. There's quite a lot more sophistication in terms of how we can build segments and sequential segments and um, kind of logic building segments. Also at like metrics, you can actually build quite complicated metrics as well using various metrics and dimensions. Um, and it's got a lot of functionality. So I think for kind of a casual user, there's probably not much difference between GA4, from my point of view, between GA4 and Adobe. I think if you're really a deep dive analyst, then I think Adobe really does provide a lot more. Yeah, that's kind of, kind of covered all of this. Uh, I, mean, I thought you probably had, I was just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right through. I can't remember when it yeah. changes. There we go. Yeah, so that's a whole bunch of visualizations you can drag in and they're powered, you basically build the table, then the visualizations are powered by the table. Yeah, there's lots you can do on it. It's, it's a good little little product. Yeah, and it's the level of complexity you can get to in terms of segmentation things with Adobe. I haven't yet found it. In Google. Yeah, I think I think we saw about earlier. Like, there's very little you can answer those really kind of niche business questions with it. Like, if someone asked you a weird yeah. question, those weird questions you get, you can as an analyst, you can nearly always find a way of doing it in, in Adobe. There's so only one it. that I've ever found I couldn't answer. We'll go into that later. We haven't got time yeah. right now. So moving on to Google, uh, Google wouldn't be able to answer it either. It was a needed a data science tool. Um, cool interface for GA4, if you wouldn't mind, please. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so um, I mean, obviously, Google have, have shifted more over from uh, standard or fixed reports. Uh, so though there are some fixed reports still in there. So on the left hand side, you've got acquisition, engagement, monetization, retention. Um, the majority of the reports have now moved into uh, um, GA4 Explorer, which is kind of a bit like uh, Google's custom reports. So uh, yeah, that's what Explorer looks like. Uh, it's more flexible in terms of what you can do with it. Uh, um, the only thing um, to be aware of um, is that and rather annoyingly at the moment, uh, you can't uh, only one user can share those reports across the organization. Um, so you have to basically create a like analytics app, like a generic user. And the other thing is at the moment, you can't import um, uh, uh, pre-built reports, uh, which is again, really annoying on, on J4. I hope they introduce like shared assets, which is part of J3. Um, but there, there are additional functionality. So like funnels be math massively expanded. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, funnel, um, you can kind of combine lots of events together to build these very like bespoke funnels and 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 such. So, it, but it's more on the analysis side. So, you know, like, uh, yeah, the um, 
the other thing I think is nice is obviously the real time reports are now kind of uh, uh, exposed and bubbled up a, a bit more, and also the intelligent alerts uh, and anomaly detection they've 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 expanded out. Um, I hope they build that out even more because um, uh, obviously the audience is bit and the predictive audience is, is quite a, a cool kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so um, I did put a link in the chat to the GA4 demo account. So there's both an app version and a, uh, a kind of web version. So my suggestion really would be for people to kind of like try and see. Um, uh, Adobe Phil, I put a link to the Adobe University account. So I think hopefully people can just like sign up as a student or whatever and at least get access to a, like a demo adobe account um what, what i kind of call it is the, the sort of cinderella test like does it fit uh and, and a good way to try that is you know try it and see and see if you like using it and and which which one is easier to use etc i accidentally clicked it which is why the screen went funny so okay. um i was trying to copy it out and i sent it to me later so yes they've, there's many requests to be emailed out afterwards I've used Explore. Also, it's been seems to be called Explorer, Explore, and Explorations. So you may see Google reference any of these three things. Um, I call I've known it as Explore. They've recently seemed to go for Explorations, but you see Explore. So you might see articles about and blogs about various ones. It's been in beta for a few years, so actually there have been you know they have kind of released it a bit, and people have written blogs about it. So you might find that there are different naming conventions depending on the age of the blog, for example. Um, but it is effectively the same tool. And it is the way you can create fallout reports by grouping things together is much better than the old uh, GA. Kind of getting on to the questions we've looked at. We've looked at main use cases, which are better suited to your business. And it kind of comes down to the sort of things we've discussed previously. These are the questions we looked at. And then kind of looking at a fallout of, this is more of a fallout report than a decision tree. Now, the first thing when it comes to making the decision about all of this is the first kind of question is, are there any EU restrictions? Are there any restrictions on using Google in your location, i.e. EU restrictions? So is this going to play a part in your decision making of what tool you choose? I'm going to pass that one to you, Google Phil. Yeah, thanks, Alice. Um, and actually, someone's asked that question in, in the chat as well. So uh, I got it. Uh, okay, uh, the I'm trying to think if I added, yeah, if I could jump to slide 42, or actually you jump to slide 42, uh, and we'll come back to this slide on 35. Uh, if we'll let you I jump. don't know if we actually have time to jump forward. Can you cliff notes it? Um, we are over time at this point. Sure. Over. Uh, okay, uh, uh, it would be faster to explain it if I could just show that one screen if possible. Okay. So I just want to cover this one because it's a common misconception. So Google Analytics 3 out of the box is illegal in your is in europe uh you unless someone goes in like an analyst or, or implementer and changes anonymized ip to off um i don't know why google haven't just rolled out a bulk update to analytics or javascript to do that they haven't i don't know why um uh but the good news is you can make ga3 and and also um sorry ga4 and um and ga4 uh, um, premium or, or 360 uh, are compliant as well. Um, so GA uh, for anonymized IP is on by default. So you don't need to worry about that bit. What you do need to be aware of, though, is that uh, Google signals you can basically set to off unless someone's done a positive opt in. Uh, and the same also for personalized. And uh, what commonly people don't realize that you can actually change these settings in both Google Analytics 3 and Google Analytics 4. Um, the other cool one is uh, there's now you can pick the data center for BigQuery. So in the screen, it says USA, but you can basically pick London or Germany or wherever you want, you want BigQuery to be hosted. Uh, and also Google have now, as part of GA4, they've got local data collection centers. Uh, so it says uh, EU data is collected in EU. Uh, and also you can do a server side setting to overwrite uh, 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 um, personalization. And, and so, so they've got better with those features. Um, so it's not, uh, it is a little bit, unfortunately, GA3 has got a bit of a bad press because of like Net Doctor and, um, and their default settings, unfortunately, uh, but it's definitely possible to make GA4 compliant and, uh, um, and those are the ways to do it on that screen. Jumping back in short, this isn't a consideration and that's why it's at the top and there are no arrows coming from it because it's not a consideration in your, it, it shouldn't be a consideration at all. Um, Obviously, the very first question you need to ask yourself is, how much budget do you have when you're going into this? Or how much budget could you get? It's slightly different, but if you have lower, Google Analytics for costs sort of need to be figured out a little bit because of the uh, issues with, well, not issues, but the ways they charge around uh, cloud storage and things. But if you have 
a lower budget or no budget, there's Google Analytics free. So free or paying small amounts, but then you kind of get into the more interesting questions. If you do have budget to pay for, there's kind of more around what you're going for. So as mentioned around Adobe, it's very bespoke. So you're going to need money for the actual implementation as well. If you only have the sort of small budgets or not big enough for implementation and the Adobe costs, you're going to need to stick with the kind of Google side of things. You know, would you like to do the next one, Phil, around site complexity decision making? Which, which Phil? Oh, yeah, well, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I, I think you know, if, if, your, yeah, if your site, you know, is, it better? is your site really, really complex and you're going to hit this, you're going to start to run into problems with your limited number of variables or you need something that could roll, you know, a website that's effectively eight websites in one effectively, then, you know, I think Adobe could give you that flexibility. Um, mm. I'll do the next one. The next one, your current text, your current tech stack as well. If you are in the Google Cloud, I mean Google does an integration, but if you're kind of oh, is it, if you have your products, maybe. yeah. So if you've already got, if you're in a massive organization and there's already loads of other products there, um, and you're not going to basically make be able to make the whole organization change, then Adobe could be a slight, a slightly better option for you because it does have a lot of integrations with other enterprise type type um, software. Um, oh, 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 the next one. Does your company have an issue of using Google? You know, you go to one company, they love Google. There's like Google's brilliant. You go to another company, you really do not like Google. It seems to be like a cultural thing. It's like a bit of a Marmite thing. Um, so if your company doesn't like Google, again, they go point two and they're analytics. Well, there's that. There's also the consideration around: I do. You, does your company view itself as a competitor for Google? So yeah, some companies do around aggregation, uh, flights, that kind of thing. Yeah. Do you, I, yeah, I'm sort of guessing that that's also a consideration for some yeah, companies. Microsoft Bing, don't use, if you're Bing, don't use Google. Yeah, pretty much. Um, the <laughs> idea that they, they think Google cares. <laughs> yeah. Somewhat funny, I think. Um, just to get through the last two very quickly, goals around prior, your business priorities around personalization and testing. You know, if you're planning on doing a lot of personalization, as you mentioned, uh, Adobe Phil, they are um, Adobe Adobe. Adobe Analytics has a suite of tools. So if you've got budget, you've got, you know, you've got a very, you've got budget, your site's not complex, but you have real ambition in that area. Going for Adobe is probably a better option than Google in many ways. And then the final area we've got is kind of what's your in-house skill set like? Um, and I was a bit brutal about this around, we have an analytics team, Adobe, you're going to get that extra value. You, they can dig in, they can really get to the bottom of what's going on. If you don't have an analytics team, probably, and you're kind of doing things as part of your other roles, Google's easier because it's a much simpler tool to use. More people know how to use Google. Uh, plus, you can probably save some money and spend it on some analysts. Do you agree with those sorts of uh, distinctions, uh, Google, Phil? Yeah, I'm 90% on the uh, uh, people, 10% on the tool, uh, or other way around if you're on Adobe, sorry. Um uh, the uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think the 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 question that I'm I, I almost want to just uh, sort of ask uh, um, uh, Adobe Phil and, and also Alice, and I'll loop back around on this one. Um, where do you think the tools are heading? So uh, in terms of like we, we've looked at kind of like you know Google trying to cover its its itself from like PII and a massive privacy time bomb by forcing everyone to shift to GA four trying to put up walled gardens and stuff uh like where where is adobe moving in terms of what it's going to look like in a year's time uh adobe phil you're probably best uh, one well because I'll, I'll, I'll be honest um you know they have a few bells and in, not excluding the privacy thing you know they add, they add extra things in all the time like workspace is relatively new it's been around for a few years or they've got like um kind of some sort of like i can't remember a customer journey analysis but it's kind of things that they bolt on top of the existing data so the actual way it collects data and the actual fundamentals, I don't think it's really changed for oh God, someone can collect me in the thing for a long, long time, maybe 10 years. Um, in terms of where it's going, I don't, I don't actually, <laughs> I don't actually know what the, I've, I've not been to a Adobe sales pitch for a long time. I know they're doing stuff with the Adobe experience platform, which is like the new, it's a new product, isn't it, that they're doing. So I think maybe they're looking, I guess, Alice, Alice, correct me on this, potentially just re-platforming at some point, but that's a complete guess. I think a few years ago they were talking about how they kind of moved Adobe Analytics into a kind of a more central position within the Adobe suite. Mm. Um, 
So I'm not sure. I would imagine this could be more interesting things that they're doing on the kind of data side. But I think they may have replatformed the analytics itself. They may have moved that into kind of a central and and you wouldn't know it's not something they're going to announce because they wouldn't do things. Yeah. But I thought they were doing that about three years ago anyway, that they were kind of prioritizing the analytics as data to drive everything else. So it's kind of moved across slightly. Um, I'm not sure exactly what their changes are going to be. Um, by the way, with this decision sort of fallout that we've been looking at, this is sort of some of the decisions. There will be other things that influence your choices. There are other tools out there. We've just been talking Adobe Analytics versus Google and people will still have preferences. So with everything on here, you may still have a preference and go for Adobe or Google in a different situation. So, um, yeah, that's yeah, the only thing to add on this. So. I guess to add on a close on this flow chart, I think coming out to what I think is like, if I start a new company, which one would I pick? But it would literally completely depend on on the company and, and, the, and the requirements. Mm -hmm. I still think they both have their like I think they both have their strengths and weaknesses, and they both do overlap an awful lot. It's yeah. just you know I guess coming from the Adobe side, I'm probably slightly leaning towards Adobe. But you know right now I'm using GA4, and it's for what I need to do in terms of product analytics, it's, it's completely meets my requirements. So yeah. cool. Anything uh, you want to add, Google? Uh, yeah, I would say um, in terms of where I see Google moving um i've obviously with the ironic thing with google analytics 3 it was kind of more unstructured whereas google analytics 4 they're forcing companies to use a certain like naming conventions and send stuff in in, in a certain way a bit like structured data in in terms of on the seo world uh, and i think the reasoning behind that is so that they can then add on these machine learning models and anomaly detection and uh, um, things like that bit like obviously everyone's seeing like chat gbt going a bit crazy at the moment there's going to be stuff like that that's going to be like uh you know outlier dot ai and all, all that sort of thing so i i think google is heavily moving in that direction but it's got to get its kind of data structure right first um, and the other thing is it needs and like chat gbt is the same it needs a lot of data to uh, and a lot of benchmark data as well to understand those those trends and behaviors um, and the other key bit is is this kind of data about a user uh, and like shifting and more over to um, like uh, um, uh, uh, email hashes and user ID identification and, you know, uh, attaching to that as in obviously GA4 being user centric rather than session centric. So I think that's that's because of this need to focus on target the people, not not the sessions. And obviously both Facebook and Google are now doing uh, um, enhanced conversions and kind of customer match and and moving more into the, we we can guess what we think you're going to buy next. Uh, we just need more data about you to get it more accurate. So I think that's probably more where it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of heading. It's going to be like the machine decides, press a button, advertise now. But if you've got Gunatix 4, it's going to be able to find those customers easier or better or cheaper. That, that's my interpretation of it. So... We're almost at the end, everybody, by the way. Um, I'm sorry we're overrunning. We did start late, um, but we appreciate that you're still here. Um, we've had a few questions. So very quickly, I just wanted to jump on one that I saw that's quite interesting at, at this stage, which is what are the most cost effective features that make more sense to switch to paid GA4 or Adobe Analytics? I think that's a very difficult question to answer, um, but I'll let Adobe Phil try first. Don't. <laughs> what? Well, the best value fee. The most the cost is, it all comes down. It all, thing is, though, it all comes down to your business case, right? So let's pick something. Let's pick the personalization. Say, if you, you if you want to do a CRO program, and if you if you want to do a CRO program, you're going to need a quite heavy duty a heavy duty tool to do that, like Adobe Target. So you know, if you run a run a, a CRO test and you get an uplift of I don't know one percent, then that would be a cost cost effective way of doing it. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Alice. I mean, it's really difficult to answer because it depends on your use case and how much money you're going to get from the feature. Like, for example, customer mm -hmm. journey mapping, like you could get you could buy that tool and get and spend ages doing analysis, but then actually get zero value out of it. Yeah. When some, yeah. Effectively, cost effective features are only cost effective if they're used. So you have to know what you're going to be using. So that's where kind of understanding your business, you know, what is your, how comp the question of how complex is your site will give you an idea of which features you need. Um, you know, are you going to need something that has real flexibility in how you tag and actually has a lot of capacity, whereas, which drives you kind of the Adobe route. Whereas if it's very simple, 
but you need to, um, if it's a very simple site, not high complexity, but high traffic potentially, you might be using Google already, but you might be pushing into the paid one because you're hitting the limits. So the limits that um, Phil, Google Phil mentioned earlier, if you're kind of hitting those, obviously you're going to want to push into the paid version for Google. So is there anything you'd like to add, uh, Google Phil? Uh, I think we probably need to wrap up soon. Uh, so um, I think maybe if we jump to the next slide, uh, it's got, so um, if if we haven't managed to answer your question, oh, oh up one more, uh, uh, oops, to the, the uh, LinkedIn bit. Okay. Uh, the uh, um, if uh, if you sent us a question and we weren't able to answer it, uh, if you can get your phone and scan the relevant person you want to like connect with, that should take you to um, uh, LinkedIn, and uh, just click connect on that. So uh, um, uh, those uh, I'll just accept all connections mm -hmm. from 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 that. Uh, we, we will obviously do a kind of we'll, we'll do a, a wrap up. Right, uh, edit of this video and 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 the um, tweet the slides and just send them through as as uh, resources kind of afterwards. Um, there were some other bits that I wanted to share afterwards, which also we just just kind of ran out of time. Um, just one little takeaway I was going to mention um, uh, on GA uh, four, um, someone asked a question about conversions and is it capped at thirty on the free version or fifty? Uh, uh, what I was going to say is you can actually run GA four in dual mode. And then you actually get 60 conversions to play with. So there's kind of ways of getting GA4 running in a clever way so you don't necessarily have to pay for the paid version of GA4. That was my only uh, my only other sort of takeaway. Um, I, what I was going to say is um, I think we can kind of sort of close the session now, but I'm happy to stay like a few more minutes if people, we've got some questions in the chat. There are a couple more that I was seeing. So I think we don't have to, I, I think what I'm saying now is for the next 12 minutes, so to, to the hour um if you're both available i'm available if we want to just stay and get the questions out of the way but obviously we can say there's no more kind of content to share if people are need to go find their dinner and feed the cat or anything like that how do does that line up that's that's fine with me alice uh, uh should we bring up the questions on the screen like the the bit where it says q a we can but actually they're kind of mixed between the chat and the q a so okay. there's only a few within the q a um there's one about are we comparing Adobe legacy implementation or the new web SDK implementation? We weren't really talk. I would say we weren't really talking about the actual SDK. We were talking about the actual admin side a bit more than that. Um, would you like to add anything, Adobe Phil? No, 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 not really. It, we were more talking about like the actual logistics of collecting the data, sending the data. It's like, yeah. Cool. I think we answered the one around um, switching between the kind of switch of switching to the GA4. There was a question of should we consider GA4 works best for e-commerce sites? I believe there's still a few questions around GA4 and e-commerce. Is that fair, Google Phil? Yeah, if you're on Shopify, there's not a native plugin, annoyingly. Uh, there are um, ways of getting GA4 to work uh, uh, on Shopify without needing to use Shopify Plus. Uh, ping me an email, I can send you the the liquid theme script that you can use. There's basically, a, we haven't well, actually, we'll probably do a blog post about it soon. But uh, um, yeah, you can you can get it working without uh, without that. Uh, the other ones, so you need like third party plugins for uh, what well, either you need to do. Or let's let's say Magento, it's, it's going to be a GA three data layer and a mapping GA three uh, to GA four. Again, we can share the the mapping files afterwards. So there there are ways of doing it. Um, and I would say GA three is probably enhanced e-commerce. I would say is slightly easier to use. But all of the features have moved across to GA4, and you've now got wish lists, which is a new feature, and a couple of extra fun all kind of steps. Um, I'll post a link, which is the the steps in the chat now, which which gives you the comparison of of the two. Let's just chuck it in there now. Oops, chat. Where are we? There we go. Um, that's a cheat sheet that, that helps with that that mapping between the both. Just to add that, just to add that, yeah, Adobe does have good e-commerce tracking, yeah. but I think you know if if your business model was just quite a simple website that sells something and you just rely on PPC campaigns or, or Google display network, then definitely Google would, would, be, a way to, would, be, a, would be a good solution. Yeah, I think it, as we've kind of talked about before, it depends on the complexity. Adobe is so good with complexity and good with conversion and tracking conversion and all those options. It's fantastic for e-commerce. It's just not necessarily as out the box and it's much more expensive. Um, so again, it comes down to kind of your business needs in that way.
Yeah, well, I would right. say the, 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 whatever I worked with one of Dome Analytics and organization, there's always always there's almost always someone working on the e-commerce tracking, like improving it, trying to get some well, for me anyway, there's always always been like improvements that need to be made or tracking extra stuff or like, you know what I mean? Oh, that's going to be like we set it up once and it it's a way. Well, no, I it's not that I disagree. I just don't know if that's because the e-commerce tracking's not working or it's because they want more things because Adobe is so bespoke that you well, know you can the- be like oh and I want to track this and I want to track that and I want to add this in and I, I yeah I'm not too sure there's always the yeah it's a bit of a devil's, devil's curse where it's exactly yeah. that it's like people want to know people want to add extra stuff into that e-commerce stuff oh we want to do this category we want to do this and it's almost like you start with just they bought these five things for this much then it starts to all the categorization. It almost just you spend you yeah. spend as much as your time as you want making it more complicated. It's it's things like which where which location was the product they bought on the page when they searched. Yeah. Um, you know they searched for product. There was a list of products in the search results. Which location was the one they ended up buying? And you get requests like that, and that's where they're always working on the e-commerce because it's oh yeah, and we want to track. Uh, the the um, order of the search results and how that then impacts conversion and yeah that's why I wonder if it's self fulfilling. Um, the next question just, is- just going to add just on e-commerce there is one feature which um, is annoying that's got lost on GA4. Uh, so calculated metrics have a moment disappeared. Uh, um, the there is a workaround for it. So if it's e-commerce you're doing um, a cost of goods sold file to get your profit per product to get your your um, you know, profit-based bidding rather or rather than revenue-based bidding, you can still do it. You you need to use um, Firestore, which is like a Google server-side lookup, uh, which allows you to do a query to say, okay, this product ID returned the cost of the product. So uh, there are, uh, and then you you push it in as a custom metric or or, or do do the calculation in, in BigQuery. So there there are ways around some of the features that have got lost from from GA three. Um, just thought I'd mention that one quickly. Yeah, that's cool. So just to quickly get through a couple of others, does Adobe have server-side tagging options similar to GA? Yes, it does. It's in launch, as I understand it. Um, I don't have the details and I haven't used it, but it does exist. Um, I'm not going to pass that onto the floor just because we're going quickly. Has anybody here, I haven't used Adobe Dreamweaver. Have you used Adobe Dreamweaver, uh, Phil? Wait, Adobe Phil, if you haven't. It no, I haven't, no. Okay. Unfortunately, we don't uh, have a view on that one today. How efficiently can we replace our GA360 session-based dimension reports in GA4? That's one for you, Google. Uh, well, it'd be nice if we had session. That, I mean, at the moment, we've got uh, either events, um, user scoped or event scoped custom definitions uh, with item scoped, aka product scoped, on its way anytime now. Uh, yeah, there's not session scope is still missing, which is really annoying. Like things like login like would be a good, good use case of session scope. Um, Does it have a workaround, yeah. Phil? Doesn't it fire a session event? It fires a session start event, doesn't it? Yeah, in terms of feature parity with, with GA3, I think what, what someone's referring to here, um, your simplest option at the moment is to use user scoped. Yeah, like if, if someone's logged in, uh, you just make sure you never send a logout event and at least you'll get close to the same value as, as session scoped. Yeah, there's there are ways you could do it using custom, custom HTML for uh you know sending an event based off a session activity but it's a bit of a bit of a like yeah i'll probably just wait for session scope to to be added cool okay so it's not that easy at the moment is what we're saying yeah um but it's getting there but it's, it's kind of waiting for them to get feature parity really that's the, the main yeah. thing so anyone running both aa and ga4 at the same time can this be done with customized events on pages i'm not entirely sure question is is Jblog on the call still. Um, you can promote someone to the stage, by the way, uh, Alice. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're still on. Uh, we'll yeah. skip to the next one, but basically they're all custom events. They all run with sort of custom events and data layers. Um, GA4, you can use uh, GTM and obviously Adobe, you've got Adobe Launch um, and then you feed your data layers into those. Um, GA4 measurement protocol do not have a way to overwrite the IP information, for example, geolocation. So to apply a specific geo to an MP event, you so the question here is for an anonymous attendee, GA4 measurement protocol do not have a way to overwrite the IP info. For example, the geolocation. So to apply a specific geo to a specific MP event, do you have insights on this, Phil, Google Phil? Uh, so 
Oh yeah, this one came up before. Um, the, the this was a feature request um, that was meant to be added. So, so we were doing end to end tracking with the CRM system. So like getting HubSpot data flowing through into GA4, uh, and also the same with call, call tracking data. And this particular issue uh, sort of came up uh, because you don't want to use the IP of the server, or and you don't want to use the user agent of the server. You want to use the the client's IP and use a that's just just relayed. Uh, there is a setting where you can, so the IP is automatically removed on, on GTM server side. You can turn that off so it relays the, the client's IP. Um, I need to check whether it's been added in the measurement protocol a API. I know it was one of the top in, in terms of feature requests. It's been a couple of months since I looked at that particular feature. Um, I, um, I, I'm hopeful they've, they've added that, but I'd need to just check on the... the uh, um, the measurement protocol API change log to see if it's in there. But yeah, I get what you're saying and the reason behind doing it. Uh, um, I'm just not, I, I need to check, see if it, it's, if it's been added. Uh, are you saying that it's, you've done a test recently and uh, overriding IP and user agent doesn't work on J4 measurement protocol? Yeah, because it used to be the case you couldn't do it, but I think they, they've added it into the API now. I think that's probably the answer that they add it into the API then. So there's one around keeping anonymized IP equal to true for GA4. I oh, that's native, to... so you don't need to worry about that. Yeah. So don't basically don't touch it for GA4. Another question, Adobe Analytics has Adobe Experience platform to help sell Adobe Analytics. What Google Analytics for premium have similar to offer? So what do Google have similar to Experience platform? I would say Google's better at integrating with other platforms in some ways, or other platforms often integrate quite well with Google. So they rely on other CMSs, but what would you say, Phil? Yeah, uh, so like the MailChimps and like the WordPress normally, like there's Sorry. two parts. Oops, yeah, sorry. WordPress. Yeah. yeah, I mean, normally two parts of the integration. You've got the, the like the Google Site Kit, which now supports J4, for example, uh, um, and um, and the, uh, which also does the adding the code and pulling in the data f like into the the kind of uh, the back end interface. So you can see the stats at the same time because there's those two sides. Uh, MailChimp kind of does the same thing. It sort of does the integration, does UTM tagging, and also then pulls in the stats into its MailChimp's interface. So yeah, I just, again, watch the space in terms of those tools switching over to GA4 to add support for it. As I said, Shopify is kind of a bit late late to the party um, on, on that one. I'm not sure if MailChimp have upgraded, uh, got a J4 native connection yet. If they haven't, they probably will pretty, pretty soon. And the only thing I would just mention, J4 now does have two or three extra UTM fields, which a lot of people don't don't know about. So, um, and if you are running Adobe and Google, remember to add those three new UTM fields as excludes parameters into Adobe, um, just so your landing pages don't get like messed up. Cool. Uh, so. Just quickly, the um, we've got two questions left. We're now at basically at time. Can we have the same data layer for both GA4 and Adobe? I do know Adobe have a way of uh, implementing a Google data layer with um, Adobe Experience Manager. I'm, yeah, we'll take a tear from you guys. So uh, let's start with you, Google, Phil. Uh, yes, Schwarzer <laughs> it is just uh, mapping the word data layer to normally a sub nesting. So data layer uh, uh, and then dot analytics or whatever the sub nesting is going to be called. Are you happy with that answer, Adobe Phil? Yeah, you can do because it's the last one. All, all data layer is just a JavaScript object, isn't it? So yeah. Yeah. I think Adobe have a fancy way of doing it as well, though, which you can probably pay for. Um, <laughs> there's a theme here. Uh, last, the very last question we've got time for. Do you have any more information on ways of dealing with the new data studio thresholds? We probably did. Left that one to last. Uh, uh, yes. And if you were on our GA Forward event in November, uh, you should check out uh, the talk that was done on that, uh, where we answered that question. So JJ Reynolds did an amazing talk on it. Let me just find uh, uh, the link to it. So let me just see if I can quickly grab it and chuck it in okay. chat. Well, Bill's doing well, that. I'm going to quickly say my goodbyes. I need to. I'm being yep. chased. <laughs> I was going to say. So no, but thank yeah, but thanks everyone for attending. Thanks Phil. Thanks Emily. And thanks Will as well for uh, organising. And I'll see you guys. Sometime, hopefully, hopefully. Yes, thank Who's you again, uh, Phil Law. Uh, greatly appreciated. Thanks again. Uh, I definitely owe you a pint. So next time I'm uh, in London, uh, 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 give me a shout. Cool. Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And one last, you know, we are at time now. Anybody who's left still on the call, I feel lonely despite the fact there's still 40 of you. Um, please do add us on LinkedIn, messages with any questions. Uh, thank you. Uh, anything you'd like to say, Phil? Uh, so uh, 
I was just going to throw in a, a, a cheap joke at the end. So, uh, uh, did you know, Alice, that J J Free is 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 no longer is no longer available? It's it's become four. Uh, so uh, yeah, so that's hopefully gone to the remaining audience. I've not frozen. I've just uh, I the, mean, uh, or or for uh, what's happening with uh, Measure Camp um, uh, with the next one of that, Alice. I don't have any updates on Measure Camp. Uh, sorry, guys. I wish I did, or at least London Measure Camp. Uh, I'm assuming there will be one this year, but yeah, sorry, I don't have any updates. And let's not talk about how your jokes are why many of us are at a- on the AA side. Yeah. Uh, the um, cool. And we need to also pick a topic for next uh, uh, the, the next webinar. So uh, we'll I think if with uh, we're open to suggestions for that. Uh, I would also just just uh, as as we sort of. Um, consolidate these the data from this and 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 the uh the, the slides and just combine it we did outreach to the adobe like sales team for for uh some tips and tricks but uh they we didn't get much out of them unfortunately so uh um but maybe they can add some stuff to this later we, we can add into the appendix um all right thank you again everyone and uh cheers thank you everybody have a lovely evening